it's all about humanity. And here we go yet again, people. Welcome in. I can see people joining. Good to see you. Don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, don't forget to retweet this. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Do read the disclaimer down there if you're new. So important. And also for those on the podcast, you would you would not have seen um, the the couple of issues, the things I talked about or the things that came up in the intro video, which was my website, ukbitcoinmaster.com and bitcoininterviews.com and of course the bit about not your keys not your coins so really really important that you understand that you should never keep any coins on exchanges that's so important um welcome in everyone i can see you joining today is the 21st of march 2024 as always have a strong bitcoin hand the name of the game of this channel is to help people build a strong hand because this market gets thrown all over the place and if you wait to the end and watch the short video clip I've got you will hear from somebody way more qualified than I am to tell you as to why these markets get thrown around so uh, do stick around very quickly if I may if I don't hit the wrong button just quickly you should go into the show notes and you should click the link tree address and follow me somewhere um, it's all there also you should get on the Orange Pill app. If you want to get 10,000 free sats, then use my link that's in the show notes as well, and you can earn 10,000 free sats. It is so important that I give a shout out to the show sponsors, the best of Exmoor, great vacation club, over 200 properties for everything from sea view properties to pet friendly to sleep two, sleep 21, one night, 20 nights, you get to choose. The guy, Chris, is a Bitcoiner as well. So we all want to recharge our batteries and have a holiday here and there. So it might be worth at least checking it out. Um, it's in a beautiful part of the, the UK, the West Country, Exmoor National Park. And, you know, when you're offline, just check it out. Scan this QR code because you can book a holiday for a day, two days, a month for how many people pay in Bitcoin, pay in currency and get a further discount by using my um, discount code. So uh, do check that out. Well worth having a look. Also, if we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price, we've got 65.6. So we are still in buy the dip territory, people. Really important. If you get an option, buy that dip. Now, I think I might have messed this up. So just bear with me a minute. I want to get rid of that and I want to pop up that. We have 28 days to the Bitcoin halving. Can you believe that? That is galloping towards us. Absolutely mind-blowing. And if you haven't lived through a halving yet, well, you're in for a little bit of a treat, I can tell you. So let's see who we have got in the chat. In fact, hang on a second. Something's just gone missing there. Hold on. Bear with me. Yeah, I have something has definitely gone missing. That's okay. What a damn shame. Okay, right. So let's see who we've got. I can see the regulars in. Johnny Midas, Stephen Redding, Bud Dobnik, Mr. 60, Elaine. Um, who else? Stuart Griffiths. Casso is in the house. Uh, Johnny Midas, SciFlyer67. Good to see you in the house. JB Bitcoin and Mike Dooley um, and others. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, it's getting to the point where I literally can't go and read out everybody's names. But if you want to shout out and you didn't get one, just type in UK Bitcoin Master, followed by a quick message, and I'll gladly give you a shout out. OK, so um, what I want to do is get on with the show, if I may. Um, I'm really gutted. There was something I was going to show you. Um, today is the 21st of March, 2024. And I wanted to pay homage on my channel to a really dear friend of mine that we sadly laid to rest exactly seven years ago today. His name was Dennis. He was a great friend of ours, a deep friend. And do you know what? Sometimes someone's demise give somebody else an opportunity. And if it hadn't have been for Dennis, A, a dear friend, and B, um, very kindly leaving us something in his will, 
we would probably only have half the Bitcoin that we have today. So, you know, what he'll never know, depending on your beliefs and thoughts, is what he did for us after his demise by leaving us something as a legacy. So um, forget that. I will be, you know, seven years have passed. It's just, you know, I can't believe seven years have gone since we lost him. But Dennis, wherever you are, my friend, rest in peace. Okay, so let's get on with the show. Um, and I've got a lot to go through. First article. Okay, now this is the title of the um, thumbnail and it says Willy Woo and potential gains ranging from 10K to 70K or 10X to 70X, the Bitcoin price. Just think, if we 10X from 63, you got 630,000. Never mind 630,000 times seven. The mind boggles, you know, four or five million dollar uh, Bitcoin. So, you know, Willy Wu is respected, renowned in the Bitcoin space. Um, he says um, he envisions Bitcoin reaching 4.8 million a coin, backed by extensive market analysis and a comparison to traditional assets. Wu's assessment of the risk reward ratio of investing in Bitcoin indicates a greater than 50 percent chance that Bitcoin will outperform gold. Without a shadow of a doubt, that one. Um, this assertion underscores his belief that investing in Bitcoin represents an attractive risk uh, to return opportunity that doesn't come around very often. That's the key here. These things don't come around too often. Troy, welcome. Mr. 60. Um, yep. I don't think there's any more at the moment. Don't forget to smash the like button. I'm looking at the monitor, and I had a right nightmare with this second monitor. It would not work. I had to come in through another method, and I was frantic right up till five to six, my time, trying to get this thing sorted. So everything's all messed up at the moment, but at least we are functioning. Um, so it's all out of sync, but here is my dear friend, Dennis. Um, RIP, my good friend. I don't know how this got out of sync, but it did. It did. But there we are. Um, so... Yeah, RIP. Okay, you've got this one. Um, the world's largest pension fund explores Bitcoin as an investment. This is Japan. This is monumental, people. Uh, Japan's government pension fund on Tuesday said it is requesting information on illiquidity assets such as Bitcoin as part of research into potential new investments. This is how... Your number goes up with these massive institutions that drip into Bitcoin to start with. And then we get that slowly, slowly. And then suddenly the government pension fund, our GPIF of Japan, the world's largest pension fund by assets under management on several different rankings, said it is looking for basic information on illiquid assets other than those in which it already invests. So, you know, another big player teetering on the brink of stepping into Bitcoin. And you know what? You've only got to get it announced that they did it or, um, you know, JP Morgan buys a load or Qatar decides to put some of their sovereign wealth fund into it. And all of a sudden price goes parabolic, you know, and I'm not making any predictions. You don't get that on this channel, but I'm simply saying I've learned over seven years next month. This is what drives markets in an upward direction. He's at it again. Micro Saylor, Michael Saylor. Now, for those of you that are all over Twitter, you'll be aware of this. This is for those that are not and are just, you know, buying Bitcoin for their family and want to, you know, keep that strong hand, learn why Bitcoin. Well, he's at it again. You know, he's bought another 9,245 Bitcoins for 623 million. This is monumental because now, as it says there, he now owns more than 1% of the total 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be in existence, which is absolutely crazy. Now, he is never going to keep up a black rock. They will go past him if they haven't already. But the point is, this guy understands how Bitcoin is going to eat the financial world over time, slowly, steadily, and then suddenly. And you want to be in the market when that suddenly thing happens. From Bitcoinist, uh, a decade, a Bitcoin, a decades long investment CEO says, despite the recent downturn. Now, this is the CEO of Crypto.com. 
flipping hell, they're massive, aren't they? During a recent appearance on CNBC Squawk Box, Mar Marzalek, I think you said, shared his insights on Bitcoin's enduring value amidst market volatility. He emphasized that Bitcoin is not a short term investment, but rather an asset to be held for decades. This is what I keep saying, people. You, if you're going to get into Bitcoin, the very minimum is a four year cycle or an epoch. Decades. If you can, hold it for decades so that you can, you know, leave your name. Your name will mean something to your progen progeny when you never heard that word till I heard British Hoddle say it. Progeny. Your descendants long after you are gone. But look, an asset to be held for decades. That's the key takeaway from this, people. Not get in this month and get rich next month. For any of you noobs that are watching this, this is so, so, so important you understand this. I can't get my head around this one. I've met uh, Adam back. He's a very quiet, unassuming guy, but what a clever guy. You know, one of the first people that Satoshi Nakamoto was communicating with before Bitcoin kicked off. So he's definitely an OG. But so was Roger Ver, who forked Bitcoin off to Bcash. Um, throwing his dummy out and having a tantrum about Bitcoin block size. And, you know, we know what happened to Bcash. It, we're still around, but, you know, it's falling to zero against Bitcoin. But, you know, Adam Back wants prodigal, prodigal son Roger Ver to come home to Bitcoin. Um, I can't ever see that happening, you know, if I'm absolutely honest with you. But, you know, Adam Back would like that to happen. He said the CEO of Bitcoin company Blockstream and one of the earliest Bitcoin developers today extended an olive branch to longtime rival Roger Ver, an early Bitcoin investor turned Bitcoin cash or BCH advocate. Back says it's time for Ver to be the prodigal son and return to Bitcoin. Well, like that's ever going to happen, but there you go. I think there's too much bad um, energy uh, under the bridge, so to speak. I don't think he'll ever do that. And, you know, I've got, a, I've got a take on this, and that is how long do you keep going down the wrong road before you realise you're on the wrong road and make a change? And he is never going to. Uh, Roger can stay away, Casso said. I tend to agree, Casso, but, you know, I've got a sort of caring for humanity and maybe if he had a load of humble boy and came back and sort of said, yep, you know what? I've got the whole thing wrong. I'm humbling myself. You know, hey, listen, Bitcoin's for everyone, but that is just simply not going to happen, is it? Now, here's a story I wanted to highlight to, to those of you that are not aware of it. <clears throat> this guy here, um, he's in a legal battle to recover 400 million of Bitcoin he threw in a landfill site. This is James Howells. In a decade-long struggle, James, a 38-year-old IT expert, has now decided to fight a legal battle to get back a hard drive containing Bitcoin worth over 400 million. Howell's ordeal originated from a seemingly casual cleaning mishap a decade ago, leading to an unimaginable loss. It all began in 2013 when Howells accidentally discarded a bag containing his hard drive, mistakenly deeming it trash. Little did he realize this would lead to the forfeiture of access to 8,000 Bitcoin, a digital fortune that has since skyrocketed in value over the years. And here's what I would say to you. You need to be mindful of this sort of thing can happen. You need to be mindful of the scammers that come after your Bitcoin. And um, I'm not going to name anyone, and I don't want this person to put anything in the chat. But there is somebody in our chat right now that's recently been scammed out of a, a, a fair chunk of Bitcoin. Unfortunately, it isn't coming back. But um, it can happen. These scammers are getting more and more sophisticated. Thankfully, the main stash is safe offline but this was taken from his exchange. He admits it was his own fault, actually. But hopefully he's learned a really, really hard lesson. I'm not going to name them. I don't want them to name themselves. I'm simply saying, people, just be mindful. Make one slip up, one mistake. Click on one bad link. And all of a sudden, those scammers stroke hackers, they will clean your wallets. Don't let it happen to you. And don't throw anything away that may have 
some seed words in that may have a recovery phrase or something. Just be so flipping careful. So, so important. Okay, I found this from the Bitcoin therapist that I wanted to read to you. And you just want to soak this up, people. When trillions of dollars in premiums premium begins to flow into Bitcoin from real estate and equities, everyone you've ever known is going to hate you. They're going to be jealous of your Bitcoin position. They will tell you that you were lucky and they did everything right and it's not fair. They will be angry at, at that their homes are no longer the best store of value and their assets are no longer appreciating like they once were. They will be waiting for the next government stimulus check or for a free meal to soothe their wounds. All because you saw the value 10 years before they did. You did the bleeping work bought religiously like a maniac for years when everyone called you crazy and huddled like a psychopath for a decade plus. In fact, you were so enamored that you bought for years without stopping, even through the bear markets. I believe we will see the day when these other assets are de demonetized and Bitcoin absorbs every premium that's left. There will be a time when bit everything that's, that's let that that's left flows directly into the bloodstream of Bitcoin. So you need to be prepared. Seriously. I think that's an incredible tweet. You got this one from British Hoddle. He's been a guest on my show, bitcoininterviews.com. Good morning. I am buying Bitcoin today at 69K because it's going to 1 million in the next eight years. Same person four days later. I sold Bitcoin at 67 because crash. Don't be this moronic. You will live to regret it in short order. In other words, you buy and you hold for a decade plus and you do not worry about the day to day, week to week, highs, lows, drops, manipulations, etc. And you need to listen to the, the video at the end to understand what these big guns do to manipulate markets to buy the dip, as Rocky just said. Hi, Rocky. Joe Mellon, welcome. Um, so don't buy and then sell. And you've got to educate. When you're talking to somebody about Bitcoin in your family, your key thing you must do is explain to them that the volatility is normal. But if they zoom out, show them a chart, over time, their investment ultimately goes up from left to right around a steady 30% incline is the way that I keep it dead basic for regular working class people like me to try and understand. <clears throat> this one from Swan. There is no capacity to kill Bitcoin. Even the Chinese with their firewall and their extreme intervention in their society could not call, um, kill Bitcoin, even kicking all the miners out. My point here is you can't kill Bitcoin, said Patrick McHenry, U.S. congressman. This is coming, people, and we ain't stopping it. So batten down your hatches, batten down your security, stack as hard as you can while the numbers are down. I'm telling you, you do good in a, in a decade. Bitcoin Archive tweeted, new 840 billion global banks chats. Standard Chartered says the gold analogy remains a good starting point for estimating the correct Bitcoin price level. Gold market cap, 14 trillion. Bitcoin market cap, 1.4 trillion. Bitcoin at 680,000 would equal gold market cap. That is coming, my friends. You just got to be patient. I've never been more convinced of anything in my life. I just feel it here. I don't have any magic wand to prove it. I just feel it that we're all in the right place at the right time. And we are all going to be vindicated for holding, as uh, the Bitcoin therapist said, when that is how you get huge success in life. Gandalf tweeted, how to use your Bitcoin to generate more Bitcoin. If this heading caught your attention, I have a suggestion for you. Leave your Bitcoin TF alone in cold storage and figure out a way to increase your income to get more Bitcoin. That is the safest bet where you won't lose your Bitcoin. And then Thomas HeyApollo.com tweeted, Bitcoin was a billion dollar network a decade ago, and now it's a trillion. If you ask me, it's going to a hundred trillion. 
Every high net, net worth person is going to, individual or company, is going to buy these ETFs. You'd have to be a fool to be selling right now. Owning Bitcoin will be as common as owning Apple stock. Just watch. What we've got to do is wait for this all to play out. The hardest thing I find for people to do is just buy and hold. People get bored. They think they need to do something with their Bitcoin. They need to move it. They need to just don't. Store it offline. Make sure your seed words are secure. Your security is locked down and leave it alone. Just have a new address ready for when you add to that stack. So you don't need to plug, for me, a Trezor in. You just send it to that address. Bang. Job done. That's all you need to do. Don't be one of these people that feels the need to do something with your Bitcoin. The only thing you should be doing with your Bitcoin is ensuring that you've got proper UTXO management. If you don't know what UTXO management is, you better learn fast. Matt Cratter, Bitcoin University, has got a few videos on UTXO management, and they're absolutely superb. I would watch them. BCC Benny, I think, did one as well. Tiny fractions of Bitcoin that as the price goes up, as the adoption goes up, you could be in a situation where, yes, of course, you could still send the Bitcoin, but it might cost you more in fees than it is what the Bitcoin is worth. So it almost makes it unspendable, if you take my point. So that's the only thing you should be learning about to make sure that you don't have loads and loads of tiny little UTXOs or little bits of um, Bitcoin. Um, those people putting stuff in the chat, uh, because my back monitor failed and I'm coming in from a different um, computer, the text over there is quite small, so I'm struggling. I do try to keep an eye on what is going on over there, but if you want my attention, you've got to type in UK Bitcoin Master. I'll just say that again. So that leads me on to the video of the day. Okay, so if you are down the rabbit hole like I am, you've all heard of Mark Yusko. Mark Yusko is head of Morgan Creek Asset Management, I think. It used to be Morgan Creek Digital with Anthony Pompliano and Jason W. Williams. He wrote the book, Bitcoin Money You Can't, I'll say mess with, but it's a mess with an F. Um, so, um, you know, the guy's pretty clever financially, and he always, always comes out with common sense, in my opinion, um, as to where he sees Bitcoin going. Yeah, sure, being an, an asset manager, he, has to, he deals with other um, crap coins. I can't be helping that. But I always find that Mark always tends to talk a whole bunch of sense. And I want to run this video clip where he's talking about how those big guns crash the markets, manipulate the markets so the weak hands sell out and then they mop it back up and how they do everything one minute before closing on the day rather than me trying to explain it. Just have a listen to Mark Yusko here. I think we're at this interesting crossroads where people who understand um, the difference between permanent wealth mm. and temporal wealth um, are really flocking to the hardest money that's ever been invented. Oh, by the way, oldest trick in the book, right? Oldest trick in the book. There you go. If you want to buy a lot of something, what do you do? Do you go out and start buying it? Hell to the no. You sell some. You tell everyone how much it sucks. You short it. You push the price down so you can buy more at a lower price. It's the oldest trick on Wall Street. I mean, I tell a story all the time. Dwight Anderson, he went to Julian and said, hey, Julian, we should buy a bunch of copper. Here's all my analysis, all stuff. And Julian's like, yeah, that's, that's great. He says, all right, how much should I buy? He's like, no, I want you to sell 50 million. And I want you to tell the New York Times that we're selling. And I want you to tell everybody at Morgan Stanley how much it sucks. Then we'll buy after the price goes down. So this, this it doesn't happen every day, but if you watch um, in the evenings or, or mid-afternoon, you get these, these ramps down and that's people pushing the futures down. Here's the scariest part. You know, there's a great chart that shows most of the gains in the stock market, right? Stock market's gone up a lot over the last five years. Most of the gains don't happen when the market's open from 9.30 to four o'clock. The vast majority, and it's not quite 100%, but it's pretty close, happen overnight. 
all, this is crazy, all of the gains in the Bitcoin ETFs happen overnight. Hmm. 100%. None of it's happening during the day. Because what's wow. happening is right before, right before close, the big dogs are selling naked in the futures market. They're pushing the price down. ETFs have to buy. They can only trade the last minute of the day. Literally, right? ETFs set a price the last minute of the day. Then they have to go get the Bitcoin overnight um, or, or settle it the next morning. So they're pushing the price down. They're marking the price at the, the close. And then it opens higher and they capture all that gain for themselves. And this, again, this is not new and it's not unique to the Bitcoin ETFs. Watch most big stocks. They kind of go back and forth and back and forth during the day. And then they gap open the next day or they gap down. Whoops. So you know, I don't understand half that, but it shows that these big guns manipulate it for their own gains and they manipulate it so weak hands sell. Ignore these swings. Ignore these 10%, 15% price drops. Go back and look at how many, I think, I think 15% price drops there were leading up in 2020. We had the same in 2017 leading up to the blow off top. It is absolutely normal for these to be manipulated. And I guess I'm talking to the people that are finding this channel for the first time or they're new to all of this. It is absolutely normal for a wick up, then a wick straight down. And weak hands think, oh, my goodness, what have I done? British Huddles tweet, you know, where you're buying it today because it's 69 and it's going to the moon. And then you sell four days later because it dropped to 67. Don't be that person. Because if you do, Bitcoin's all wrong for you. You need to go do something else. Try and win in Vegas or something. Because that's not how you treat Bitcoin. You buy it and you hold it for a decade. That's, you know, we Rocky Palumbo's in the chat. We can talk about the five years plus five years equal retirement. Simplicity for me, just buy it and hold it for a decade as a minimum. If you're younger than me by 10, 20 years, hold it for 20 years. Because you are holding the most pristine asset humanity has ever seen. This is a once in a species opportunity for you and your family to completely change your financial futures for generations to come. And you should not take that lightly, in my opinion. OK, my um, quote of the day, uh, whoops, actually, uh, because I love quotes. Let me just bring it up. Sorry, people. Um, there it is from Henry Ford. Think about this. Wealth, like happiness, is never attained when sought after directly. It comes as a byproduct of providing a useful service. Serve others, people. My top tip is how can I help someone else? I live my life by first, do no harm. And secondly, if I can give somebody a lift up, if I can give somebody a helping hand, I'm all over that. And I've lived my life, my philosophy, my values are providing I go through life looking out for others, not doing an injustice to others, being kind where I can, then maybe those pearly gates are going to open for me when it's my time. I'm keeping that loose, depending on your beliefs, but you take the point. I just want to live a good life and help others where I can. And I believe if you keep giving out, the universe is going to bring it back. But it isn't going to bring it back next Tuesday when you might need it. It's going to bring it full circle. Bram VDB, welcome. So keep trying to help other people. I don't think you'll go far wrong. Um, if you want to support the channel and you don't have to, there's some SATS addresses. There's a buy me a cup of coffee with crappy fear address from anywhere in the world, by the way, that works. Again, you don't have to, but many people reach out and say, look, we don't know how to tip you. You haven't monetized your YouTube channel. There you go. If you want to keep your precious sats and buy me a coffee, you can. If you want to send me some sats, you can. If you don't want to do anything, you simply don't have to because I'm not after it. So that's it, people. Yet again, another 30-minute show done and dusted. I hope you all got something uh, from it. Once again, rest in peace, my dear Den uh, friend Dennis. If you missed the start of the show, he was my dearest friend, and we laid him to rest seven years ago today, and I wanted just to pay homage to him. So um, without him, 
I wouldn't have half of the Bitcoin stack that we've got, bless him. So, you know, he will never know what he did for, for, for my family after passing and leaving us a part of his legacy. There you go. That's it. Um, have a great, uh, where we are we, morning, afternoon, evening. Have a fantastic weekend uh, wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing. Be safe. Casso, thank you for joining me again. Always great to see you in the house, sir. Uh, I'll be back on Monday, 6 p.m. London. We still have that shorter time delay between the U.S. and the U.K. because our clocks don't change until the 30th, I think it is. So if you're on the east coast of America, I'm going live for the next week or two, maybe at uh, 2 p.m., as opposed to 1 p.m. and the same with the West Coast. That's it. I'm done. Have a good one. Please go back into the comments afterwards and um, leave a message. We still have nearly double the amount of viewers than we have people that have hit the like button. So please, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button on the way out so that we can spank that YouTube algorithm. I'm done. I'm going to leave you with my social media links, as I always do. Um, and I'll catch you all on Monday.